Think of your body like a savings account, but instead of money, it's calories. When you want to grow your savings, you either make more money or spend less. Similarly, to lose weight, you either need to consume fewer calories or burn more. Every bite and sip you take, except for water, adds calories, which is energy for your body. Just like money you deposit in a bank. Here's an interesting fact, our body uses calories even for simple tasks, like digesting food. Even when we're sleeping, our body uses energy. In fact, during an average 8-hour sleep, most people use around 400 calories just to function. This base energy consumption is known as the basal metabolic rate, BMR, and it changes for everyone based on things like age, height, and weight. There are tools online to help you figure out your own BMR. For instance, a 30-year-old person who's 186 centimeters tall and weighs 82 kilograms has a BMR of 1,837 calories. This means they burn this much energy daily without doing any activity. Speaking of food and calories, while eating gives our body calories, did you know that some foods make our body work harder to digest? This is known as the thermic effect of food, TEF. Foods like fats and oils are easily digested and use very few calories. But foods rich in protein, grains, dairy, and high-fiber fruits and vegetables make our body work harder to process them, burning more calories in the process. So, it's harder to gain weight from these healthier choices. You might be thinking, are there foods that make us burn more calories than they add? While it's a popular idea, it's not true. For that to happen, a food's TEF would need to be more than 100%, and that's just not possible. Now let's talk about weight loss. Many will wonder, why the need to exercise? If you eat fewer calories than your body's basal metabolic rate, you will lose weight anyway. Theoretically, this is correct but practically it's quite dangerous. Without exercise, eating less than your BMR means that your body's hormonal balance could get disrupted. You'll feel more fatigued. You'll become more irritable. Focusing on studies or work will become very challenging for you because. Do you know which body part consumes the most calories in the human body? Our brain uses almost 20% of the body's energy. It also becomes difficult for the body to exert self-control. Many people experience that when they reduce their food intake, they feel weak. Their mood deteriorates significantly. They will diet for a while, but soon they'll start overeating, and their diet will fail. Therefore, our goal here should not just be weight loss but healthy weight loss. And for healthy weight loss, exercise is essential. In fact, four main things are essential, a controlled diet, exercise, proper sleep, and keeping yourself stress-free. We'll delve deep into diet control. Have you ever felt that even after eating an entire chocolate bar, you still feel hungry? There are certain foods that give you this feeling of not being full. The reason behind this is the satiety index. The satiety index is a metric that ranks foods based on how full they make you feel and for how long, in relation to their calorie content. Some foods make you feel more satiated than others, even if they have the same calorie content. For instance, certain types of food can make you feel fuller for longer while others might leave you feeling hungry shortly after eating. Research from 1995 highlighted this concept. In their study, researchers tested 38 different foods by feeding 240-calorie servings of each to participants. They found that boiled potatoes had the highest satiety index, scoring a remarkable 323. Other foods, such as pulses, high-fiber foods, low-fat products, dairy, eggs, and nuts also tend to have a high satiety index. This means that consuming these foods will likely make you feel full with a smaller calorie intake. Thus, if you consume foods with a high satiety index, you'll likely feel full while consuming fewer calories overall. However, there's a catch. While you might think of munching on boiled potatoes all day to feel full and reduce calorie intake, that wouldn't be the best approach. Our bodies require a balanced and nutritious diet. 
solely focusing on one type of food, even if it has a high satiety index, won't provide the diverse nutrients our bodies need. When aiming for healthy weight loss, it's important to focus on preserving muscle mass and overall health, rather than just losing weight. Our bodies need six essential nutrients for optimal functioning, proteins, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals, and water. A well-rounded weight loss diet will ensure an adequate intake of these essential nutrients. People often blame carbs for weight gain because of popular diets like keto. But a big study in 2017 showed it's more about how many calories you eat, not just the carbs. It's also good to remember that not all carbs are bad. Sugary foods might be harmful, but things like fruits and whole grains are good for you. So, instead of just cutting carbs, it's better to eat a balanced diet and watch your total calories. Eating right is important for good health. It's not good to cut out carbs completely or eat too many fats. We need a mix of both. Carbs, like whole grains and fruits, give our brain and body energy. Fats help us use certain vitamins and protect our body parts, but we shouldn't eat too much of the bad fats. For a healthy diet, try to eat more whole foods like grains, fruits, and veggies, and less of fried or sugary foods. It's all about balance. Some people say we're too strict about food rules, but eating right is really important for our health. Things like biscuits, cake, donuts, and many bread types have bad stuff like refined flour and sugars. There are better foods to eat like brown bread, veggies, and buttermilk, especially when made with healthy fats. Once you eat better, you won't want the bad foods anymore. In Japan where people believe in consuming only 80% of their hunger capacity. This philosophy encourages the intake of vegetables in large quantities as they are rich in fiber and fill the stomach faster, which in turn makes you feel full with lesser calories. Exercise is also key. There are three kinds. Cardio exercises like swimming, running, or playing intense sports increase your heart rate and are crucial for cardiovascular fitness. Stretching exercises are essential for flexibility, including yoga and pilates. Strength training exercises, such as weightlifting, push-ups, squats, and using dumbbells, are vital for muscle strength and endurance. The idea is to strike a balance among these three types of exercises for a healthy lifestyle. However, the type of exercise doesn't make much difference when it comes to weight loss, as long as they help in burning calories. Some exercises like running, skipping rope, playing badminton, football, and squash tend to burn more calories compared to others like cricket, yoga, or general stretching. It's essential to be mindful of the calories you're burning. If you're aiming for significant weight loss, you should engage in activities that burn more calories. However, you should always choose exercises that you enjoy, whether it's dancing for 30 minutes or running for the same amount of time. Incorporating more movement in daily life is also beneficial. Simple activities like walking more or using a bicycle for commutes can help in burning extra calories. These small efforts collectively make a difference. There's a misconception that certain exercises target specific body fat areas, like belly fat or facial fat. This is a myth. While some exercises might emphasize a particular muscle group, overall fat loss comes down to burning more calories than you consume. Your body will start to get into a better shape. However, where your body loses fat primarily depends on genetics. I'd also like to point out something crucial. There's a significant link between stress and weight gain. When you're stressed, cortisol levels in your body rise, which can slow down your metabolism and increase your cravings for fats and sugars. If you want to lose weight, managing stress is vital. You can do this through meditation, playing sports, or spending quality time with friends and family in real life. Remember, the principle behind weight loss is simple. It's about maintaining a calorie deficit, controlling the calories you consume and increasing the calories you burn. The calories you consume should come from a balanced diet, including whole grains, fibers, fruits, vegetables, and proteins to keep you feeling fuller and reducing hunger. It would be best to avoid refined flour, white sugar, unhealthy oils, and packaged foods.
these can increase your food cravings and divert your focus from healthy nutrients. Ensure you move your body in some way daily and make exercise a regular routine. Incorporate cardio exercises, strength training, and stretching exercises. Also, get 7 to 9 hours of sleep every day and manage your stress levels. Spot reduction doesn't work, and being healthy isn't about fitting into a particular beauty standard. Combine all these elements, and you'll have the perfect plan for healthy weight loss. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Don't forget to leave a comment below, and hit that notification bell to stay updated. See you in the next video.